Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 8. Chinese Giants According to ancient myth, giants were turned to stone. Archaeologists in China recently discovered the graves of real giants who lived 5,000 years ago. An excavation in Shandong province revealed the graves of several people who would have towered above the tallest men in other Neolithic communities. They weren't particularly large by modern standards. These weren't 15-foot giants who ate ordinary humans as snacks. The tallest skeleton was estimated at 6'3", while others measured a little shorter at around 5'11". Feng Hui, the head of Shandong University's School of History and Culture, said the measurements were based on the bone structures of the skeletons. To give you some context as to just how big these people were, just look at these numbers. The average height of an 18-year-old man living in Shandong in 2015 was 5 foot 9. Modern men living in the same region with access to better food and nutrition are still smaller than the people buried in this cemetery. It's unclear how tall the average people were 5,000 years ago in Shandong. However, in Europe, they were even smaller. Most European males never grew taller than 5 foot 5. And while these ancient people weren't as big as trees, they were bigger than seemingly everybody else on the planet. It's especially exciting because scientists didn't find only one example. They found a whole graveyard of men who would have been nearly a foot taller than the tallest Stone Age men in Europe. China is hardly the only place where giants supposedly roam the Earth. In the Ural Mountains of Russia, there is a series of strange rock formations known as the Seven Giants. There are seven fantastic stone pillars standing in a rough circle, with each one between 90 feet and 100 feet tall. Scientists say they formed naturally 200 million years ago from wind and ice erosion. But according to local legend, the pillars were once living giants. Legend has it the terrible giants were terrorizing the local population, so a shaman managed to use a ceremonial drum to turn the giants into stone. They've stood against the horizon ever since, their bodies encrusted within the seven stone pillars. There are similar pillars that can be found in China's stone forest. And one of the massive columns, called the Ashima Stone, is said to contain the body of a beautiful girl who was also turned to stone. Number 7. Gunung Padang In the deepest jungles of Indonesia, there is an unusual archaeological site baffling historians and archaeologists. This site is known as Gunung Padang. The reason it's so controversial is that the government in Indonesia claims it's the oldest pyramid in the world. The pyramid could be 15,000 years older than the pyramids of Giza. It also might be proof of a previously unknown civilization, one that might have thrived on this planet before human society. But that's just one side of the story. The other is a little less exciting. Apparently, some skeptics doubt that Gunung Padang is a pyramid at all. The mystery began with the discovery of the site in 1890. Scattered across the top of the hill are the remains of an ancient terraced structure. Even just by looking at pictures, you can see how the hill may have once been the foundation for a huge pyramid. There are shattered pieces of stone everywhere that archaeologists think were used in the construction of a megalithic structure. But even among archaeologists who believe the place is ancient, there is disagreement. Some think it was a pyramid, but others say it was nothing more than a burial ground. It may have been a gigantic altar or possibly a shrine, something used as a place of worship. The only thing they all agree on is that Gunung Padang was a place of extreme significance. But to whom? The presence of the terraces rising up the hillside suggests it was a very advanced civilization behind the pyramid. They would have had knowledge of engineering and construction techniques, in 2018, geologist Danny Hillman used radiocarbon dating to place the structure's age at 20,000 years. Then, members of the Indonesian government set up a task force to prove that Indonesia was home to an advanced group of ancient humans. A lot of experts doubt the authenticity of the radiocarbon dating. There are rumors that the government was trying to prove that an ancient civilization lived in Indonesia to boost tourism. As for the Sundanese people, the indigenous folk who have lived in the area for centuries, they have their own theory. They think Gunung Padang was built by the legendary King Siliwanji. There is a myth that says the king tried to build a palace in a single night. 
and locals think the ruins are the result of that impossible quest. Number 6. The Mari Man The Mari Man is the weirdest geoglyph you likely didn't learn about in school. It's one of the biggest petroglyphs on the planet, but nobody knows who made it or why. It's located at the top of a flat plateau in the middle of the Australian desert. It's 37 miles from the town of Mari, and the geoglyph itself stretches 1.7 miles from head to toe. If you wanted to walk around the perimeter of the geoglyph, you'd be setting out on a 17-mile hike. Suffice to say, the Mari Man is humongous. He makes the Nazca lines look like children's doodles in a sandbox. The discovery of the Mari Man was made by a helicopter pilot flying across Central Australia in June of 1998. Pilot Trevor Wright happened upon the enormous man etched into the sand. It hadn't been there before, so somebody must have created it in the weeks or months prior to its discovery. The geoglyph isn't ancient, it's a new creation, and nobody has ever taken responsibility for it. You'd think whoever made such an enormous monument would want a little credit, but it's been over 20 years and the case still hasn't been solved. In 2018, Australian entrepreneur Dick Smith offered a whopping $5,000 reward for information leading to the creator, but it's now five years later and still nobody has come forward. Number 5. El Tafin In the Mexican state of Veracruz stands an entrancing place that you won't find on most tourist maps. It's the lost city of thunder called El Tajin. It's a recognized UNESCO World Heritage Site, but it holds mysteries that scientists have never been able to fully unravel. Based on archaeological evidence found throughout the city, El Tajin flourished between 600 and 1200 AD. You might think this was a Mayan city or an Aztec city, but in fact, it was populated by the Veracruz culture. They were part of the Totonac civilization, an extremely powerful group of people whose history is shrouded in secrets. They had an extremely advanced culture and their religion was complex and colorful. Their architecture was even more advanced than a lot of other places in Mesoamerica, and the city of El Tajin was the center of their great kingdom. So, what exactly happened to it? One of the most impressive structures in the city is the Pyramid of the Niches carved with a dizzying array of 365 small niches. Experts think that each one represents a single day in the year. It may have been a pyramid-style calendar, though no one can say for sure. They also had an enormous ball court that was so big it must have acted like an ancient Super Bowl stadium. In most Mesoamerican cities, the main deity worshipped was Tlaloc, the god of rain. But in El Tajin, they worshipped Tajin, the god of thunder and lightning. Great rituals were held in which dancers hung suspended by ropes attached to 65-foot poles. It was a wildly mythical place. But then, it was suddenly abandoned. Around the year 1200 AD, everyone packed up and left for a reason that scientists have never figured out. Number 4. Ancient Time Lords the oldest calendar in the world was found in a Scottish field. Scientists were excavating Warren Field near Craith's Castle when they came across a series of pits. Researchers from the University of Birmingham believe the pits were dug as part of an early calendar meant to track the phases of the moon. If true, it would be extremely impressive because of the date in which they were created. Tests at Warren Field have shown that the pits were dug about 10,000 years ago. The assumption is that they were made by primitive hunter-gatherers, but they couldn't have been that primitive if they were making moon calendars. The pits align perfectly with the midwinter sunrise. Vince Gaffney, a professor at Birmingham, said the evidence shows that the prehistoric society was sophisticated enough to track time across years. This is pretty shocking, seeing as up until this discovery, the oldest similar calendars were found in the Near East, and they were 5,000 years younger. So, how did the hunters in Scotland gain such impressive knowledge of the cosmos thousands of years before the dawn of civilization in Mesopotamia? Unfortunately, scientists don't have an answer to that question. Number 3. The Ruins of Kilwa Kisiwani When most people think about ruins from powerful ancient civilizations, their minds turn to places like Egypt, Peru, and Europe. But up until recently, Africa was home to some of the mightiest civilizations in world history. 
And one example of this is on the island of Kilwa Kisiwani, which is situated just off the coast of Tanzania. The island was once the epicenter for one of the most advanced empires in East Africa. Starting in the 9th century, Kilwa Kisiwani became an important port city. It continued to thrive and grow, reaching its height during the Middle Ages. The African Empire stretched from the coast all the way through Kenya and to Mozambique. Yet for all their might, all that remains of them today are a handful of crumbling ruins like the Great Mosque. The Great Mosque is still the oldest standing mosque on the East African coast. You can also find the ruins of the city palace, located high on the island, allowing one to look out over the sea. And at one time, it was the largest building in sub-Saharan Africa. The big mystery here is that nobody knows how the kingdom got its start. The most popular theory is also a legend. The myth is that Kilwa Kisiwani was established by a Persian prince who bought the island from an indigenous king. The island had once been connected to the mainland by a bridge, but the new ruler destroyed it. The city was then fortified and was turned into a stronghold. As for its end, that's not a mystery at all. The island started to decline in the 16th century thanks to the Portuguese. They showed up in East Africa and dominated trade in the region, leading to the destruction of Kilwa Kisiwani. Number 2. Remains of the Buddha Archaeologists recently discovered a ceramic box with 2,000 tiny fragments of cremated bones in it. The discovery was made in Jingchuan County, China, at the Longxing Monastery. Experts behind the find think the cremated bones belong to Siddhartha Gautama, who is also known as the Buddha. The Buddha was a very real person who lived and died 2,500 years ago. Just like Jesus Christ, historians are almost certain he was a real historical figure. Jesus Christ laid the foundations for Christianity, while Siddhartha Gautama led the foundations for the Buddhist religion. Through his 80 years on this planet, he taught his followers the nature of suffering and the peaceful path to end suffering. His lessons were all about enlightenment and reaching serenity through understanding. When the Buddha died, legend has it that his remains were cremated and divided into thousands of pieces so that his disciples wouldn't fight over what happened to his body. Royalty in China supposedly took pieces of his body as keepsakes. But there are no historical records as to where his ashes and fragmented bones wound up. The ceramic box that was just found in China has a tantalizing inscription on it. The box was dated to the year 1013 AD, and that would have been 1,500 years after the Buddha was already dead. The inscription says that monks from the Lotus School gathered 2,000 pieces of the Buddha, including his teeth and bones, and buried them in a box at the Longxing Monastery. This is an amazing discovery, but it's impossible to prove its authenticity. The Buddha's DNA isn't exactly on record, so the bone fragments can't be confirmed as the religious leaders. The inscription suggests that monks spent centuries gathering back the pieces of their incinerated master. But again, it's simply impossible to verify. Number 1. The King and the Bull's Blood King Midas has so many legends involving his name that historians have a tough time figuring out which ones are true. King Midas was the ancient ruler who could supposedly turn objects into gold with a single touch. And that's where the term Midas touch comes from. Historical records are truly baffling when it comes to Midas. He was supposedly a king in ancient Greece, hence his place in Greek mythology. But he was also said to be a real king who lived 2,800 years ago. Historical records suggest that the real King Midas was the ruler of Phrygia in the 8th century BC. He had a great palace in the city of Gordion, ruling at a precarious time in the kingdom's history. Late into his rule, King Midas suddenly found himself surrounded by an army of nomads. The house of Midas was in serious trouble as the invaders gathered outside his gate. Although King Midas had cultivated relationships with the Greeks and Assyrians, they were too far away to help him battle the ruthless Sumerians. It was clear that King Midas was going to lose the fight, so he chose to drink a deadly poison to prevent his capture. He had his alchemist create a fatal elixir, which killed him before the nomadic warlords burned the city to the ground. According to the legends, the elixir was poisoned bull's blood. Most of the story is true. 
Gordian was definitely burned to the ground in 800 BC. Ancient historian Herodotus also mentioned King Midas being killed by poisoning. But was it really bull's blood that did him in? Modern scholars think the blood was, in fact, arsenic, the red-colored kind known as realgar. It was a horrific poison known by the ancients for thousands of years. But the weird part is that ancient people also believed that the blood from a bull was poisonous. It was like how they believed the blood of a unicorn could give a person eternal life. Nobody knows what King Midas drank just before his city burned. It may have been bull's blood mixed with arsenic, or maybe it was something else entirely. Either way, it was an awful way to go. Today, scientists are still desperately searching for the tomb of King Midas, the only thing that will truly put the myths of the ancient ruler to rest. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. San Agustin Archaeological Park The San Agustin Archaeological Park in Colombia is one of the biggest collections of religious artifacts throughout the entirety of South America, and it might just be the biggest prehistoric cemetery on the planet. San Agustin is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has over 500 statues, tombs, and sarcophagi dating back over 2,500 years old, when a northern Andean culture ruled from the 1st to the 8th century. Located in the southwestern Andes of Colombia, there are earthen burial mounds with ceremonial sites, all connected to each other with pathways and terraces. There are monolithic stones with carvings of gods and mythical animals done by skillful artists that demonstrate the creativity and imagination of the society. It was one of the earliest complex societies in the Americas, and the tombs contain elaborate funerary architecture and decor. Many of the sculptures and monoliths depict death and the process of dying. There are a wide array of styles represented in these works, some of them realistic and others more abstract. But the strange mythical animals and godlike faces embedded into the stone evoke ideas of passing into the next life. Next to some of the biggest burial mounds, you can also see more threatening creatures like snakes and scary birds, presumably placed there in order to defend the dead. This site was abandoned around 1350 AD for unknown reasons. Peruvian Idols In 2018, Peruvian archaeologists uncovered the remnants of a mysterious passageway which was adorned with strange figurines made out of mud and wood. They found this passage in an archaeological site known as Chan Chan, a UNESCO World Heritage Site which is located just outside of Trujillo, Peru. Chan Chan was the capital of the Chimor or Chimu Empire, which ruled over the region from around 900 to 1470 AD, when they were defeated and taken over by the Incan Empire. The Chimu are considered the best architects of ancient Peru, thanks to constructions such as the Citadel of Chan Chan, the Fortress of Paramonga, and the Chimu Wall. In Chan Chan, archaeologists have discovered the sacrificial remains of over 140 children and more than 200 lamas dating to between 1400 and 1450 AD. This strange passageway is yet another incredible find in the area. There were 19 of these sculptures found inside of the corridor, estimated to be around 750 years old. They measure about 2 feet tall and line the corridor on either side. All of them bear scepters in one hand, a trophy head in the other, and wear clay masks. They also each have shields on their backs. They've been dated back to some time between 1000 to 1300 AD, which make them the oldest sculptures yet found in Chan Chan. Experts think that these sculptures were probably guardians since they were located at the main entrance. They also would have been used to mark tombs of important figures from the Chimu culture. This is the first time a corridor or hall like this has been found at the site, and besides these sculptures, has all kinds of decoration. There are images of flowing waves and squares, kind of like a chessboard. Archaeologists believe they represent the sea and fishing nets. There's also some kind of cat-like animal on the walls with spikes and a raised tail, which was apparently a part of many cultures during that time period. Monteverde Monteverde is a now-famous archaeological site located around Puerto Montt in southern Chile, and it's one of the oldest examples of human occupation in the Americas. Some think that it was inhabited as early as 12,500 BC. But the people who discovered it didn't know that. In fact, it was discovered by a group of lumber workers who thought that something might be up when they saw a bunch of big animal bones on the eroding sides of a creek. They called in archaeological authorities who discovered that it was much more than that. 
Vanderbilt University archaeologist Tom Dillahay and his team discovered evidence of human occupation that had been preserved for all of these years under a peat bog. The animal bones were just the beginning. There was a tent-like structure that was about 60 feet long which could have sheltered around 30 people. There were various support posts that seemed to indicate various living areas. They also found three sets of footprints that had been preserved into the clay. Plus, there were a number of tools made out of pebbles that had probably been used for scraping and cutting. When they tested the charcoal from some hearths or ancient fireplaces that they discovered on site, they dated Monteverde to around 14,500 years ago. Over the years, more evidence has been found that these early people weren't just nomadic hunters. They were perhaps one of the first year-round human settlements in the world. Plus, they also had advanced crafting capabilities. They apparently used 10 different kinds of seaweed from the coast about 50 miles away from their community to make both food and medicine. There is still an ongoing debate as to when people arrived and settled in the Americas, with some estimates going back 30,000 years or more. But the archaeologists excavating here don't think that people were present that long ago. 15,000 years seems to be the most supported date in the past. Cave of Han La Cueva de las Manos, or the Cave of Hands, is well out of the way of everyday civilization. Located in the Patagonia region of Argentina in the Pinturas River Valley, you can only get there by making a long trek through treacherous gravel roads. However, for those who dare to make the journey, you'll learn that it's well worth the effort. The Cave of Hands contains some of the most intriguing and mysterious cave art that the world has ever seen. It is also considered some of the earliest forms of cave art dating back around 10,000 years ago. Surprisingly, not all of the art in the cave comes from one group of people. In fact, archaeologists have identified three different styles of artwork inside the caves, all of which are impressive in their own right. But the star of the show is without a doubt the stenciled handprints. There are hundreds of these hands lining the walls of one part of the cave, with a surprising array of colors. Those were probably made around 5000 BC. But how did the ancient people make these paintings in the first place? Experts think that they used their own hands as a guide. They'd craft spray pipes out of bones, hold their left hands up against the cave walls, and use their right hands to stencil them. To get the different colors displayed on the caves, these artists would use different kinds of minerals. For example, iron oxide was good for red and purple, manganese oxide for black, and so on. There are also paintings of animals and humans, and other art depicts hunting with tools, providing us a small window into what life was like for people there so long ago. Spiral-shaped mass grave Recently in 2018, archaeologists were excavating an ancient settlement known as Tlalpan, just south of Mexico City. Here they found something quite surprising, a grave from around 2,400 years ago. But it wasn't just the fact that it was a grave. As archaeologists dug deeper, they discovered that there were 10 skeletons all arranged in a strangely planned spiral shape. Although there have been a number of intriguing discoveries inside of the Tlalpan archaeological site, this one might just take the cake for the creepiest and most mysterious. Most of the skeletons belonged to young adults, both male and female. However, there was also a single older adult, a young child, and an infant, estimated to be around one month old. These bones were arranged laying on their sides with their arms interlocked into a big circle. There is also evidence to suggest that at least two of their skulls had been purposefully modified during childhood, perhaps due to some religious practice. Others had their teeth filed into different shapes. Clearly, this grave is creepy, but evocative. Given that there are a wide array of ages and genders represented, some archaeologists think that the grave might be some kind of interpretation of the circle of life, but no one knows yet if the skeletons inside of the grave died by natural causes or at the hands of others. This would be an interesting new discovery about the little-known Tlalpan people who existed long before the Aztecs. This is the first time a grave with so many people has been discovered here from this time period. The Lost White City In 2015, archaeologists explored the ruins of an ancient lost city in the Mosquitia rainforest in Honduras. For centuries, indigenous locals spoke of a legendary white city, also known as the City of the Monkey God. But there was no physical evidence of the once thriving metropolis. Everyone thought it was perhaps a legendary city until 2012, when an overhead aerial survey detected ruins. The mysterious culture that inhabited the White City thrived a millennium ago before unexplainably vanishing. During their visit, the team of experts mapped the site's plazas and earthen pyramids, mounds, and other structures. 
They also discovered a collection of stone sculptures that were last handled a thousand years ago when the city was abandoned. The cache may have been an offering, according to Mesoamerican archaeologist Christopher Fisher, who participated in the expedition. He also said that it's incredibly rare to find artifacts like these in such an undisturbed, pristine state. Very little is known about the people who lived in the White City, including what they called themselves. And La Mosquitia region that the city is located in is one of the world's least scientifically explored areas. The discoveries in recent years and further exploration will hopefully help researchers get one step closer to uncovering the secrets of this city so frequently mentioned in local folklore. Chichen Itza Chichen Itza was one of the central locations of the Maya civilization, who are well-renowned as one of the most impressive and mysterious civilizations that the world has ever seen. It's located in Yucatan, Mexico, and has often been thought of as one of the great cities, or Toyans, as discussed in a variety of Mesoamerican writings. That's not a small feat. Chichen Itza was allegedly one of the largest cities of the Maya, with around 50,000 people living there at its peak. No one can say for sure when Chichen Itza was built, although it is believed to have been founded around the 5th century AD. It reached its peak at some point between the 9th and 13th century AD, and is famous for its many pyramids, ball court, and cenotes. You might recognize its iconic central pyramid, the Pyramid of Kukulkan, which lies at the center of Chichen Itza. Also known as El Castillo by the Spanish, it was named after a legendary ruler of the city, as well as the ancient feathered serpent deity believed to have founded the city. The pyramid is about 180 feet long and 100 feet tall, with 365 steps in total, counting the temple at the top, each indicating one day of the year. There are nine stages to the pyramid, each of which corresponds to a month on the Mayan calendar. These strange factors indicate that Mayan architects were incredibly proficient in mathematics and astronomy. It was built in order to give way to the descent of Kukulkan, which is one of the most mysterious natural light shows ever observed in nature. It is believed that the site has special powers, perhaps caused by thermodynamics or strange electrical currents, but every year it is believed that the god Kukulkan makes an appearance in some form or another. The monuments left behind by the Maya are some of the most incredible and mysterious in the world. Humpback Whale Early last year, local fishermen got a surprise when they discovered something pretty strange in the middle of the jungle, a 26-foot baby humpback whale carcass. It was found on the Brazilian island of Marajó, which is situated near the mouth of the Amazon River. The nonprofit research group Bicho de Agua explained that the whale probably became lost at sea and died of starvation or some other unknown cause, which makes sense. But how did it end up in the middle of the jungle? It's most likely that high tides washed the whale's body ashore and then carried it deep into the mangrove forest. It likely passed away four to five days before it ended up there. Researchers hope that a necropsy and DNA test will yield more information about where the whale came from and how it died. Elongated Skulls of Peru In 1928, Peruvian archaeologist Julio Tello was exploring the desert peninsula of Paracas, which is situated in Peru's Pisco province. It was there where Tello made one of the most confounding archaeological discoveries ever recorded. He uncovered a gigantic graveyard filled to the brim with tombs. But the weirdest things that Tello found there were many skulls with strange elongated shapes. There were over 300 of them that came to be known as the Paracas skulls, and they're estimated to be around 3,000 years old. They are the largest elongated skulls ever found in the world so far, and recreations of what these people may have looked like are a bit frightening. So, of course, everyone started wondering, who were these people, and how did their head become this way? In 2014, a geneticist tested the DNA of some of the skulls and found that their DNA had mutations that didn't match any animal on Earth. Of course, then, speculation started flying that this was proof of aliens. In 2016, further DNA testing suggested that these skulls came from somewhere in Europe or perhaps the Middle East. But this means that our preconceived notions about who was traveling to South America in the ancient past may be incorrect. However, most of this is up for debate. Some people think that the data isn't entirely legitimate, but there is no denying that these are strange skulls. You can find the Paraca skulls in the large collection of skulls housed inside of the Museum of Anthropology, Archaeology and History, which is located in Lima, Peru. There are somewhere around 10,000 indigenous Peruvian skulls in their collection, with the Paraca skulls being perhaps their most popular exhibit. It is believed that these skulls were shaped this way at birth, but the reason for why is unknown. Interestingly, 
Purposefully deforming a child's head is a relatively common practice around the world in cultures that are completely separate from each other, with some scientists suggesting it was used to show wealth, social status, or tribal affiliation. The act of cranial deformation, at least in Peru, has proven to not reduce cognitive ability despite what it may look like. Thanks for watching! What's the most mysterious discovery for you? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. See you soon! Bye!